Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll see some techniques to find the squares of a number, which will reduce the time drastically to solve uh, to calculate the squares, because so calculating the squares by conventional methods takes a lot of time. It's easy, but it takes a lot of time. And in CAT, you have to reduce the time taken. So in this lecture, we'll see how we can calculate the squares in maybe five to ten seconds. So suppose you have to calculate. Uh, some x square so the technique says that if x is close to 100 what you do is you find the difference of this number from 100 suppose example if you have to calculate 91 square so what is 100 minus 91 this difference is suppose it is d difference is in this case this d is equal to 9 then you reduce this d from the x in this case, it is 91 minus 9, that is 82. Then you multiply this with 100. And then you add this d square, that is 81. So, it will be 8281. Now, it's very simple. Suppose it's 88 square. Now, let's do it directly without this x and all. It's 12 less than 100. So, you subtract 12. What you get is 76. 7600 plus 12 square 144 this will give you 7744 4. simple suppose it's more than 100 say it's 109 square it's 9 more than 100 so you add 9 118 double zero and 81 9 square so it is 11881 so this is simple very easily you can calculate now suppose this number is not close to 100 but it's close to 50. Now what you do is, you simply, suppose the number is 62, you have to calculate 62 square. So now instead of taking 100 as the base, what you do is you take 50 as the base. So it is 12 more than 50, so you'll add 12, 74, into what you do is 50 by 100, that is half, that is 37, 37 again 100 and 12 square, so it is 3844. 4. Suppose the number is 46, so again 4 less than 50, so you do is minus 4, 42, half of it, 21, again 2100, and 4 square, 16, that is 2, 1, 1, 6. And similarly, if it's suppose say 208, it is 8 greater than 200, we take base as 200, we add 8, 216. Since it's 200 by 2, multiply it with 2, 432, 100. And since it's 8, 64. So it is 4, 3, 2, 6, 4. So now this is a method in which you can calculate square of any number in just 5 or 10 seconds. So it reduces the time for solving a question very to it reduces the time drastically. Now suppose there's another trick for so calculating squares of number ending with 5. Suppose you have to calculate 45 square. Now this is a very simple technique. 5, a number ending with 5, 45, 5 ka square, 25, now the, this 4 into 4 plus 1, that is 4 into 5, so 20, simple, suppose it is 65 square, again 5 square 25, 6 into 6 plus 1, 7, 42, it's suppose say 125 ka square, 5 square 25, 12 into 13 is 156, so this is how you can calculate the squares of numbers ending with 5. So by using these techniques, you can easily calculate squares of all numbers within seconds. And this will reduce the calculation time. Now suppose there are certain properties of squares, we'll discuss them. Now if suppose there's a question like, is 9538718219, is this a perfect square? Now, how do you know if this is a perfect square or not? Now, let's see. For all squares which end with 9, 3 square, 0, 9, then 7 square, 49, 13 square, 169, 17 square, 289. We see that the second last digit is not an odd number. It's an even number or 0. <coughs> so, we can say that all squares ending with 9 
must have a second last digit which is even. Now in this case, is this even? No, it is odd. So we can say that it is not a perfect square. Now this is a sequence which is followed for all squares. Suppose for numbers ending with 6, perfect squares ending with 6, 6 square, 36, 16 square, 216, all odd. So all perfect squares with numbers ending with 6 will have a second last digit necessarily odd. Okay. So if suppose the question is, is uh, say 1, 2, 8, 9, 8, 6 a perfect square. Is it? No, because this is even and it cannot be even. Num second last digit before 6 cannot be even. So it is not a perfect square. Okay. So now let's, this is, was a concept, let's see a question based on this. Suppose the question is x square minus y square is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you can either factorize and factorize this into two parts and x plus y into x minus y. And then it's given that x comma y belong to natural number. Okay. And how many x and y are possible, pair of x and y are possible. So either you can go about factorizing this or let's consider two methods. Method one is the method <coughs> using the second last digit of squares which we discussed just now. So to get, since these two are perfect squares and we need the last digit to be 4. So what can be the last two digits of, last digit of these? It can be 4 and 0, it can be 5 and 1, 6, 2, 7, 3, 8, 4, 9, 5, 0, 6, 1, 7, 2, 8, 3, 9. These are all the possibilities. Now we have taken this because it will be a 1 carry and it will become 4, the last digit. Right? Now, we should know that no, no perfect square with, will end with either a 2 or a 3 or a 7 or a 8. It's not possible for a perfect square to end with these digits. So you can directly eliminate this option because 2, 7, is, it's not possible. 8, it's not possible, 7 is not possible, 2, 8, both are not possible, right? 3 is not possible. So you have eliminated this. Now 4 and 0. Any number ending with 4, the perfect square, this has to be even. See, 8 square 64, so before 4 is even. Any num perfect square ending with 0 will always have a 0. So the second last digit has to be even. For 5, the second last digit is always 2. For 1, this is always even, 81, right? 121, it's always even. So again, this needs to be even. For this case, with 5, it's 2. With 9, it's even. So again, it has to be even minus 2 is even. For this case, 0 will always have a 0 and 6 will always have an odd. So now, it might seem as 0 minus odd is odd, but what the thing is that you take carry. So this will become a 9 and this will become a 10. This 10 minus 6 will give a 4 and 9 minus odd will again give a even. So since we find that the last second last digit should be even in this case it's given odd therefore not possible no such x and y exist no pair of x and y exist which satisfies this condition it is not possible and now since i've written all these equations just to make you understand but in case you're doing it this sometimes yourself you won't involve include the factors in which these are the last digits because this is it's not possible right this is one way you, you can look at this problem or else there's another method too. Suppose it's any question for x square minus y square is equal to k. Another approach could be considering x and y in four ways. What are the possibilities? x is even, y is even, x is odd, y is odd, x is even, y is odd and x is odd, y is even. Right? This can be written as x minus y, x plus y is equal to k. Right? So now if for first condition, this is even, this is even, even into even is even. So it should be a, but it's a factor of 4. Even into even is a, always a factor of 4. So it should be a 4m. Right? If it's odd, this is odd minus odd even, odd plus odd even. Again, it is a factor of 4. If it's even and odd, even minus odd, odd, odd plus even odd so this is a odd or else again the same will give you odd 
So for this type of equation, you always either the number has to be odd or the number has to be divisible by 4. In this case, if you put k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, is it even? But is it divisible by 4? No, because for the condition to be divisible by 4 is last two digits have to be divisible by 4. In this case, we see that it's not. Hence, no solution. Right? So this is a way in which you can look at things a different kind of approach rather than going by the conventional method of factorizing and trying to solve and then getting a no answer or something. You can look at certain questions in this way as well. Now suppose there's a question if x square plus y square is equal to 3, 4, 7, 9. Okay? This is the question. Again you have to find values of x and y. Now again what can be the possibility? Last digit. By the last digit method if the last digit here is 9 this can be 0. 8, 1, 7, 2, 6, 3, 5, 4 and reverse of this. Okay? Right? Now, the last digit cannot be 8, cannot be 7 and the last digit cannot be 3. So, these three are directly eliminated. Now, for 5 it's uh, 2, for 4 it's even, for 9 it's even, for 0 it's odd. So, the second last digit is even, even. In this case, it's odd. Therefore, no, no solution. Okay? So, this is a way in which you can look at things which will simplify the calculations. You, you don't need to calculate or think much okay now okay there's another tip another question which you can look at is this is not related to squares but this is also related to even or odd because this will reduce you'll understand the use of this thing now suppose this is the question what you can if you get this question what you'll do is directly you can take x cube as common then x to the power 4 minus 1 and then you'll try to factorize this Suppose this is a smaller number or a bigger number, it's, it, it becomes difficult. What you can directly think of in this type of question is, if suppose there are two possibilities, x is even, x is odd. In case x is even, even to the power 7 is even, minus even to the power 3 is even, even minus even is even. In case it's odd, this is odd, this is also odd, odd minus odd is again even. So the number has to be even number, in this case it's given odd number. Therefore, not possible. So, this is a way of looking at things. Sort of a different approach to things. So, this will reduce the time of calculation. So, you can, you should, before, if you get questions like this, you should also give a thought towards this kind of approach. You know, taking even and odd approach or the, for squares, you can go for the second last digit approach. Because these are easy to calculate and easy to do. Um, okay, we'll end this class with a very simple question. Suppose there's a question, try to solve this question. 31x plus 29y plus 30z is equal to 366. How many? What is the sum of x plus y plus z? If this is the question. Just think about it for a few seconds. It's a very simple question. Um, okay, if you've got it, it's good. Else, 31x plus 29y plus 30z is equal to 366. And we have to find the value of x plus y plus Z. It's not nothing related to squares or whatever I've thought. It's just a common sense question, a very simple question. And uh, if you've still not got it, a very simple word is calendar. If you have seen this, these are the months containing 31 days, a month containing 29 days, that's February, because it's a leap year, and 30 days. So the answer of x plus y plus z is 12, because these represent months. Okay, so I'll end this lecture with this question. Keep following Collegepedia routine for more lectures. Thank you.